somebody could pop in. I've had a few emails recently um, from people with a little bit of disbelief that uh, some of my wood turnings are indeed from firewood. So what I intend to do today is um, I'll take you out to my shed where all the firewood's kept and um, we're just going to pick a piece at random and we're going to turn a bowl. So this is the uh, back of my workshop and this is the woodshed. So let's see what we can find. Actually, I've got no light out here as such, so I hope the camera is going to adjust. Uh, okay, so this is uh, actually five ton of wood I had delivered. Uh, doesn't look a lot now, it's all stacked. But um, anyway, usually in firewood, because they normally deliver oak or black wood. Um, to us really and uh, as you can see it's all a lot of it is is split and uh, obviously been lying around so you've, you've got to be pretty choosy of uh, the type of piece that you uh, you pick um, so they're sort of few and far between. I mean, it is firewood, but oh, here we go. Here's one that looks interesting. Look at that. Not too much splitting. Now we might be able to make some sort of vase out of that. Ooh, interesting stuff. Okay, so we'll. We'll have a good look at that one. But the um, pieces of wood that are, are knotty and, you know, they hold together really well. Um, let me see. That looks an interesting piece of that. That looks a very interesting piece, actually. Might be able to do something with that. That's a very interesting piece. Hold on. What have we got here? Well, that looks alright too. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We might be able to really do something with that. Look at that. Now, I can tell you now that that piece of firewood turned up. We'd have to trim him off a bit, but I can turn that into a beautiful small bowl which would probably fetch somewhere in the region of uh, in excess of $50 by the time I finish with it. Okay, so we've got this piece of wood from the wood pile uh, and a couple of others. Um, this is going to be quite spectacular, I think, and I'm, I'm going to pre-name this bowl uh, due to the figure in the inside the wood there and I'm going to call this the tiger bowl. So the first job that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this bit of a leg here. Um, I'm going to do that with a bandsaw. Okay. So I've taken off that um, bit of a leg that's stuck out there. Um, it's preferable to 
To cut off things like that, uh, before you put it in the lathe, because it takes some considerable time to sort of machine it down. So what we're going to do, so I have this uh, screw spike that fits in the chuck. And what I'm going to do is drill a hole in the, in the center of this to screw onto the spike. It really doesn't matter because this is going to be the inside of the bowl and it's going to be machined out anyway. So just as near as you can in the middle. This is going to be <laughs> it's going to be tough going, I think. It's got a shank on there that fits in the in the teeth in the center of the the jaws here, so we'll just close him up. Do not use the motor and drive the spindle into the wood. You lock this up solid and you screw this on by hand. Like that. Now it's not going to come off. What I make sure of as well is that the base of the base of the tool rest can go all the way underneath without um, failing on the material. That's pretty important. Um, so then you know how to attack the piece of wood. <laughs> Uh, because sometimes you have to keep the tool rest all the way out here and work out on one side of the of the tool rest. I just want to show you something about the tool rest too. Um, it's designed there with the front edge there. Now that's what they actually a, a little bit of a flat there, front edge and a flat. Now that's what the tool, the chisel. Okay, that's what that rides on there. Now, see this shape here? That's shaped so your fingers are on the underside of that. Okay? So you don't get your fingers chopped off. I see a lot of people holding the, holding the chisel up here like this and getting very close into the work. That's a recipe for, <laughs> for disaster. So we want this to be just below centre height, like that. And the reason we have it below centre height is because here's the face of the work. Okay, and it's, it's rounded, if, it, if I can do it this way. Um, if you're above centre, the chisel, okay, just, you know, won't really cut. If you're on center, that's the perfect cutting um, mechanism or, or designed mechanism to cut. On center like that. But the cutting edge and the bottom of the tool is about a quarter of an inch. So you need to be, have the rest, quarter of an inch below the center height. So when you are using the tool, the cutting edge is actually bang on line with the center of the material. So that's why you set your tool rest about a quarter of an inch below center height. And of course, with different tools, um, like a very, very small spindle gauge like this one, is only about a, just over an eighth of an inch between the cutting edge and the base of the, or the back of the tool, where it rests. So you should really lift this up. I don't tend to, um, because I, I manage quite nicely, thank you. <laughs> Cutting like that. So, um, again, I'm gonna use my bowl gouge. Uh, I've had a lot of criticism uh, from the professionals.
saying, oh, you shouldn't use a bowl gauge. And I sh <laughs> I've even had complaints about me using a, a roughing gauge uh, on a piece of wood similar to this and much bigger. Well, like I keep on saying, use a tool which works for you. Okay, so I shall get my face mask and my apron on and we're going to start. Okay, so I don't know whether you caught that on the, um, the video. No. I just had a, a piece come flying out. It actually belonged in there somewhere. Came out of there like that. Now, I don't really like gluing pieces back in, so I'm not going to. So this is actually determined the shape of this bowl. So I'm going to round this around now until um, I get rid of this. So it's going to have a narrow neck to this bowl and a rounded, really rounded body then. Uh, well, we'll see how we go. I think it's going to be okay. Okay, um, I've come across a huge void in the middle there, which I wasn't expecting, but um, yes. Not sure how I'm going to deal with that yet, but um, I still want this to be the bottom. Maybe I may have to rethink this and um, have this as the uh, the bottom of the bowl, uh, sorry, the top of the bowl, yeah, top of the bowl, but um, I'll keep going with it, I'll, I've, I've had to take my tailstock away and um, I'll just machine this bit out here now and have a look. So what I found I had to do was I had to turn a, a tenon on the back here because it's, <laughs> it's really porous. Um, but we're going to do what we can with it. Might turn it to be a hollow form yet. I mean it's got nice, nice figure in the wood but uh, we'll see what we can make out of it. When hollowing something out I always find it an easy start to get a the spade bit and just take out as much as you can from the inside, it gives you a real good start.
What a beautiful little bowl from, from a piece of firewood. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video today on wood turning. And uh, if you have, please press like and uh, subscribe to my channel. That's a really good thing to do. And there's a little red box down that bottom corner on some of the videos, uh, most of them, if you're looking on a, a computer or a, a TV. Um, you press on that, it'll take you to my YouTube channel. Uh, where there is now uh, over 200 videos on this station, and I have another station for lasers, um, which there is a link on uh, my um, web page, YouTube page, to get to that. Um, if you're having trouble finding it, just put in Roger Clyde Webb Australia or YouTube and you'll get to one of my stations. So thank you for joining me and um, pop in again and I'll see you then. Bye now.